it's the weekend which is always nice and this weekend I'm here on my own actually and I'm going to be doing some work on our fruit trees including our olives. So for the past few weeks now we've been trying whenever we've had a spare moment to get through a few tasks related to caring for these fruit trees, mulching, uh, pruning etc and I just really want to finish that off this weekend. I do have a few questions around the fruit trees which I'm going to ask throughout this video. Maybe that's a bit cheeky but um, you've all been so helpful giving me ideas and suggestions on other things in other videos. Um, yeah, <laughs> I would love to know what you think about one or two questions that I have um, related to the trees. So please stick around if you know anything about anything about trees and uh, let me know what you think. I'm also possibly going to be putting up a fence around the garden house area to block a few um, kind of exits. <laughs> I'm getting quite fed up of fetching Toffee from the fountain whenever he hears voices there, he runs away in search of friends and guaranteed uh, he'll be there either making friends with people or trying to eat their picnic food or just generally irritating them so um, <laughs> I need to try and block off his paths of escape. <laughs> One of the things I wanted to do this January is prune all the olive trees or at least all the olive trees on this side of the barranco nearer the house. There are some more in another field over there but I definitely can't do all of them so I'm just going to set myself the challenge of doing the ones on this side which I don't know how many that is. I need to count them actually as well as part of this exercise but I would say at least 30. Some of them are quite hard to get to at the moment. Uh, it's a bit awkward to kind of work when there's so much stuff growing up all around them. So first things first, I need to strim some of these terraces back. We have tried to strim all of our terraces at some point this year. Um, obviously it's something that needs to be done more than once if you don't have animals kind of grazing or anything else to keep the grass and the weeds down. Um, but this one, I don't think we've ever actually strimmed this one. so. This is one I definitely need to do and then there's areas around um, in various other terraces that also need trimming down. thing about strimming is it's really very easy to get carried away because it just makes such a tangible difference or it feels like you're making a big difference seeing everything a lot clearer and easier to walk through. This terrace is looking a lot better I can get to these olive trees a little better now so I think I'll leave it there. At the end of this terrace we've got two or three trees fairly close to one another. This one we've already had a go at pruning. We've taken out all of the middle branches this one I'm going to do now and this one with the sun right behind it I also need to do along with these other one, two, three, four, three, three on this terrace. cut all the branches that are growing upwards and are growing inwards so that the middle is all nice and empty. In fact, most of the branches on this tree are growing upwards so I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do. I guess I'll just leave some. I can't cut all the branches off, right? 
Guess I'll try and leave the ones that are slightly less vertical. We're using some of our own compost for the first time. It's maybe not 100% there, but I think it's good enough to use. Which one is this? This is the fir tree. Whoa. So the previous owner of this place was a painter. His name was Pio. You might have seen on um, the front of the house, there's a plaque that says La Presola de Pio. Pio is actually short for Salvador, apparently. I never knew that. Um, and he was a painter, so there's lots of old paint buckets around. He obviously used them for lots of things in the garden and unfortunately we're probably going to have to just get rid of them now because plastic like this in the sun over years just becomes really brittle and just breaks apart as soon as you kind of touch it. So they're kind of not any good for us to use for anything now, so we're going to have to just chuck them. But some of them that have been left... Oh, there's another bit. Some of them that have been left standing up and are filled with rain, leaves, things falling into them over the years have produced this bucket of this most amazing compost soil really that's just formed over the years that this place has been abandoned and it is just so rich and it smells so good. I feel like I'm adding years onto my life just smelling this, it smells amazing. Okay, here's a question. I've been deliberating what to do about this branch here on this olive tree, whether to leave it in or take it out. And yeah, I'm not sure. So I'd love to know what you think. Um, 
my instinct says to take it out because it's kind of growing inwards and upwards and I feel like if I take it out I'll open up a lot of light for the tree and the tree will just have these one, two, three main um, like limbs left which are growing more kind of outwards rather than up but it's also quite a large amount of the tree so I'm not sure I feel like I'm being quite ruthless with these trees. Maybe too ruthless? I'm not sure. I guess we'll see next year how well they do. Um, that's another reason why I don't want to prune all of them this year because if I've done something terribly wrong and they all are really suffering next year, um, I don't want that to, <laughs> to happen to all of our trees at once. We actually didn't get any olives this year. Um, most of the trees have nothing on them pretty much. This time last year when we were first um, seeing and buying this place just after we bought it we harvested by hand um, I don't know maybe about five kilos of olives to brine and salt at home and all the trees were just completely full of olives there were so many and they seem to be doing really well this year absolutely nothing and the few olives that are on the trees are like all shriveled up and dried um, so I don't know at what point they were actually um, nice and <laughs> appetizing uh, I didn't see that point so it must have been quite a short amount of time that they were looking nice so oh uh, yeah i don't know what happened this year lots of people in the area are saying the same thing Trying to do two jobs at once as always, we'll see if either of them actually gets done. I'm trying to clean up this area in front of the house so that I can lay some of the um, cuttings from the olive trees as like a dead hedge which is going to be part of the tofu barrier plan. <laughs> this yesterday but not yet
I'm quite happy with the progress of this so far today. I think the hedge is looking like it might be able to stop a small chihuahua in its tracks. And I'm just trying to imagine where I can put these fence posts and some more fencing to block off the rest of the area where he could escape. I'm thinking to put a gate here, which will, along with the, the hedge, um, break any kind of exit route there. And then use this shade material all the way along this side and around here to join up with the gate. Um, to keep this side secure and then there's two posts that I've already put in the ground at the end of this path which I need to put another gate across. Tuffy, where are you? <whistles> what are you doing up there? Tuffy, come on. Get out of there. <whistles> come on. Come on. Come on. <whistles> Come on. There's a good boy. There's a good boy. There's a good boy. You won't be doing any of that soon, will you? So all the material I've pulled out of there has either gone into the um, dead hedge itself or into one of these piles. For kindling, wild asparagus, which I use for fire starters once it's dry. Um, some dead vines, which I need to chop up or something and some quite rotten wood which would be good to use around um, growing areas so that it can kind of decompose into the soil there make a nice rich um, addition to some of our growing soil <laughs> more wild asparagus and more there was quite a lot of that so yeah now everything is organized into piles and i feel a lot better and yeah, I mean, everything was organised before, I guess, in nature's own way, in, in <laughs> perfectly organised, um, but now things are organised um, in my way. <laughs> to you all this work because you're so naughty you're so naughty actually he's been very good today <laughs> i know that i spend all day putting the fence up for him so yeah you can see the development of this area i think um the fence is half up i had a change of heart about the shade material and decided to use just some normal like fencing material instead i think it will last longer and with the wind the wind will pass through and hopefully <laughs> not knock it over like it might have done the shade stuff because I don't have a huge amount of confidence in how sturdy my fence is. Yeah I'll finish it off I think over the next couple of weeks I need to get some cheap pallets to break apart and try and make the, the gates and I think for the rest of the day I'm just going to prune one more olive tree. I haven't managed to get through the whole um, like this side of the barranco this weekend but I have at least if I do this final tree I will at least have finished the closest terraces to the house which is still an achievement I think but before I do that final tree I just want to take you to one of the furthest away terraces and ask a quick question Toffee what are you doing? okay so this terrace here 
So this terrace is quite narrow and we've got a row of almond trees on the outer edge and a row of olives in the inside and they seem quite close together. None of the trees seem to be doing that well. Um, the almonds, some of them look pretty dead, um, but some of them were in blossom last year. So if they blossom again this year, um, we'll see if we can prune the bits that um, aren't blossoming. But the question really is not so much about the trees, it's more about um, the soil here. So I bought some green manure mix and I wanted to spread it on this terrace um, because it's going to be a long time until we actually do anything with this terrace before we probably even get around to pruning any of the trees um, or anything. But I thought just over the years that we're probably going to have this terrace um, and not be doing anything with it, it would be good to at least be kind of building the soil and sowing some green manure and stuff like that. So I've got a mix and what I'm not sure about is um, how to how to sow them basically um so yeah the ground the soil looks like this at the moment it's quite dry it's quite rocky um there is some vegetation growing but not a whole lot there's actually quite a thick layer of um, olive leaves as well that have fallen over the years i guess um so there's some sort of a mulch down already i guess so i don't know if i can just sow the seed mix directly on top of, of soil like this or whether I should be preparing it in some way um, getting rid of some of the wild asparagus maybe um, I'm not sure so we do have access to water in this terrace as well there's a small deposit at one end I would say the terrace is maybe like 60 or 70 meters long and we've got this basin at this at one end so there is a possibility to irrigate somehow um, as well so that's something else to keep in mind but yeah, basically, with that information, um, I'd love to know if anyone has any thoughts on what I should do with the green manure seeds that we've got, whether it's okay to just spread them as it is, or whether I should really try and prepare the ground in some way, or, or anything else that I might, um, might be useful to know. So if you have any thoughts, I would really love to hear them.